when you study matrices, there's something called the inverse of a matrix, which is useful in a variety of situations. It's a little bit like the reciprocal of a number. You take a number 5 and multiply it times its reciprocal, 1 fifth, and you get 1. A matrix, when you multiply it times its inverse, you get the identity matrix of the same size. You only talk about mat inverses of matrices when you're talking about square matrices, matrices with the same number of rows as columns. Mostly, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the inverse of a matrix, and it's, it's very, very, very similar to, to the row operations we did last time in the last video for solving a system of equations. So let's quickly review that procedure as an introduction to finding the inverse of a matrix. Here's a system of three equations and three unknowns, x, y, and z, and we have the augmented matrix for the system already in place here. Let's review, let's quickly run through the procedure for solving the system of equation using the row operations. To start out, we want to make this 2 into a 1, and normally we would do that by multiplying the first row times a half. Here I'm just going to be a little versatile and, and demonstrate that since there happens to be a 1 in this spot, another way that I could accomplish that is to swap row 1 and row 2. Bringing row 2 up to row 1 puts a 1 in that spot, so this is, this is not exactly standard what I'm doing here, but uh, just uh, reminding you that that swap operation does exist. Having done that, we want to put zeros in these two spots, and the row operations that would do that for us would be row 2 minus 2 row 1. We know it's going to be a minus 2 because of the plus 2 here. And row 3 minus 3 row 1 because we have a plus 3 in this spot. These two row operations will take us to right here. Pause the movie and review that if you need to. The next task is to make this 2 into a 1, which we do by multiplying row 2 times 1 half. So with the 1 in this spot, what comes next? We need to turn these two guys into zeros. This 1 becomes a 0 if we do row 1 minus row 2. The 3 will become a 0 if we then do row 3 minus 3 row 2. Performing these two row operations will finish up our work on the first and second columns. We move on to the third column. We have this one half that we need to be a one. We do that by multiplying row three times two, which brings us to here. And our final two row, op two row operations will be to turn these two entries into zeros. The row operations that will do that for the 3 halves, we turn it into a 0 by doing row 1 minus 3 halves times row 3. Remember, the reason we're operating on row 3 is because that's where the 1 is in the column. Row 1 minus 3 times row 3, so we're using row 3. And to get rid of the 1 half, row 2 minus 1 half row 3 to turn this guy into 0. So at that point, we've solved the system of equations. We can, we can read off the solutions as x equals minus 1, y equals minus 3, z equals 3. So let's come to the main topic of the day, which is matrix inverses. What is the inverse of a matrix? Here we see a 3 by 3 matrix A and another 3 by 3 matrix B. If you multiply these guys together, A times B, with A on the left and B on the right, gives you the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And the same is true if you multiply them together in the reverse order. Each of them being a 3 by 3 matrix, of course you can multiply them, and in either case you'll get a 3 by 3 matrix. And what I'm telling you is, if you check the details for either of these matrix multiplications, you'll find that either multiplication, A times B or B times A, does give you the 3 by 3 identity matrix. That's what's meant when, to say that two matrices are inverses. It means their product is the identity matrix of the same size that they are. It's analogous to the, to the numbers 
2 and 1 half being reciprocals of each other. 2 times a half is the number 1, which is, remember for numbers, it's analogous to what an identity matrix is for matrices. The notation that's used to indicate the inverse of a matrix is to write the matrix with the minus 1 exponent. If B is the inverse of A, we write that B is equal to A inverse, where A inverse as written, is written as A to the minus 1 power. And that 2C is analogous with, with numerical not notation. If you write 2 to the minus 1 half power, it means uh, the reciprocal of 2, 1 half. How do we find the inverse of a matrix? Here's a 3 by 3 matrix A. We want to find its inverse. We start out by writing down A side by side with the identity matrix of the same size as A. A is 3 by 3. We write it down beside the 3 by 3 identity matrix and we put a vertical line in between them as a separator. Now what we're going to do is row operations on this 3 by 6 matrix following the same strategy we would use if we were trying to solve a system of equations. So we're again going to be working on the columns one at a time to turn them into the same form we would be turning them into if we were solving a system of equations. First, get a 1 in this spot, which we already happen to have, so our next step will be to put zeros in these two spots. And the strategy for choosing the row operations that do that is exactly the same as for solving a system of equations. We have the 1 in this spot. To get rid of this 2, we'll be doing new row 2 is row 2 minus 2 times row 1, minus 2 because this is plus 2. And for row 3, since this is a 1, we'll have a minus 1 right here, row 3 minus 1 times row 1. Doing those two row operations brings us to this point where the first column uh, looks the way we tried to get the first column to look when we were solving systems. Move on to the second column, where we have a minus 1 here, we want a plus 1, and we can accomplish that by multiplying the second row by minus 1. Minus 1 times row 2 changes the second row like this. We have the 1 in that spot. We actually have a 0 in this spot as well. So to finish up on the second column, we need to 0 out this 1. To do that, we'll need to do row 1 minus row 2. Minus 1 times row 2 because this is the plus 1. Row 1 minus row 2 will fix the first row the way we want it in order to have a 0 in this spot. And now we're done with, row, with column 1 and we're done with column 2. We move on to column 3 and create a 1 in the row 3, column 3 spot. We do that. To make that into a 1, we multiply row 3 times minus 1, which accomplishes this for us. And then the final step will be to put zeros in these two spots. We already have a zero here, so we'll need to do one row operation to make this two into a zero. The row operation it takes to do that is row two minus two times row three. The minus two here coming from the fact that we're dealing with a plus two in this spot. Row two minus two times row three will zero out this guy and change row 2 to what we're showing right here. And what we have done, if you put it all together, is to do row operations which has turned the left side of this into the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And magically, the right side now gives us the inverse matrix. The inverse matrix for the matrix we started out with we can get just by copying out the numbers in the right hand side there. A inverse will be what's shown in this picture. And you really should check that. If you go back to the original matrix A that we started with, what I'm claiming is that the procedure we went through doing the row operations to turn the left side into the identity matrix will produce the inverse matrix on the right side. So what I'm asking you to do is to go back and check this multiplication. Check that we do in fact have the inverse for A. That is that A times this matrix really does give you 
the three by three identity matrix. There's even more connection than what I've told you so far between finding a matrix inverse and solving a system of equations. Here's an additional example. We're starting here with a system of equations. Um, we have three equations in three unknowns, x, y, and z. Let's write down the coefficient matrix for this system. I'm not talking about the augmented matrix. I'm talking about just the coefficients. We have x, y, and z variables in these three equations. So I'm writing down the matrix, which is the column of x coefficients, the column of y coefficients, and the column of z coefficients. For example, the y coefficients, there's not a y term in the first equation or the third term, so the y coefficient is 0. The y coefficient in the second equation is 2. So this is called the coefficient matrix. It's not the augmented matrix. If it was the augmented matrix for the, for the, equa for the system, we'd have an additional column over here with these numbers in it. It's the coefficient matrix for the system. Notice that these three equations, the system of equations that we started out with, and this one matrix equation carry exactly the same information. How do I see that? Look at this matrix equation carefully. It says that this matrix on the left, which is a product of a 3 by 3 and a 3 by 1, is equal to this. But remember what equality of matrices means, and also remember how matrix multiplication works. Equality means equal in every spot. If you took this product on the left and multiplied the 3 by t 3 times the 3 by 1, think about what you would get as your first entry at the top. You'd be doing this row times this column, which would give you 1 times x minus 1 times z, and that would have to be equal to, because the matrices are equal, 3. In other words, multiplying this row times this column, you would get x minus z equals 3, which is what, exactly what this equation says. When you did the second row times this column, you'd be getting 0x plus 2y minus 2z as the second entry, and that has to be equal to the second entry on the right, which is 2, which is what this equation says. And similarly, the third equation here says exactly the, th the same as what you get by recognizing that this times this, the third row times this column, has to be equal to 3. So again, what I'm telling you is this system of equations carries exactly the same information as this single matrix equation. Now, let's continue with this a little bit further and think about what it would do for us if we happen to know the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Remember what I'm trying to, to do is to show you a connection between inverse matrices and solving systems of equations. In this case, the coefficient matrix, this 3 by 3 matrix shown, happens to have this guy at the bottom as its inverse. Uh, I didn't calculate that, I'm just telling you that as a fact. I know what the inverse of this matrix is, it's this guy, and I want to show you what we can do with that. Let's come back to this matrix equation, which we just observed was equivalent to the system of the three equations. Let's come back to this matrix equation and think what would happen if we multiplied both sides of this equation by the inverse of the coefficient matrix, which is itself 3 by 3, right? So I'm going to take each of these guys, the guy that lives on the left, and the guy that lives on the right, and multiply them on the left by the inverse of this coefficient matrix, which is itself a 3 by 3. If I were to do that, I'm multiplying the inverse of this guy times this guy, and what happens when you multiply a matrix times its inverse? You just get the identity, right? You get the 3 by 3 identity. So multiplying up here, the inverse matrix times this guy would give me the 3 by 3 identity, then the 3 by 3 identity matrix multiplied times this column, what happens when you multiply something times the identity matrix? Nothing, right? You just get the matrix back again. So multiplying the identity matrix times this column would just give me the XYZ column. 
So the point is, if I multiply the left side of this equation by the inverse of the coefficient matrix, all I wind up with is just the XYZ column. On the right side, if I multiply this column times the inverse of the coefficient matrix, which I have already told you looks like this, I'm doing this 3 by 3 times this 3 by 1, which is not hard to do. I'm just multiplying these two matrices that we're looking at here, 1 third times 3 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 third times 3, a third plus a third, a third times 3 is 1 plus a third times 3 is 1, so that gives me the 2 right here. Do the second row times this column and you get 0. Do the third row times this column and you get the minus 1. Just a simple matrix multiplication. The point is, it tells me the values of x, y, and z. x is 2, y is 0, z is minus 1. So I've solved the system of equations. Now what kind of trickery did I use? Well, I pulled the, co I pulled the inverse of the coefficient matrix out of midair and told you what it was. So the summary is, if you're trying to solve a system of equations and you have some magical way of knowing the inverse of the coefficient matrix, here was our system, here was our coefficient matrix. If you somehow can come up with the inverse of the coefficient matrix, then you can easily get the solution to the system just by multiplying that inverse of the coefficient matrix times the column of numbers which appears on the right side of the equations. Now this isn't exactly a labor-saving panacea because you do have to have the inverse of the coefficient matrix if you're going to do that. And it's just as hard to find that as it is to solve the system of equations directly using the row operations on the augmented matrix. But the point is, if you have something like a computer program which will solve, which will find inverses of matrices, then you don't need a separate method to solve systems of equations. Uh, that's the way lots of calculators work. They will solve systems of equations even though they don't have any special routine for doing that. What they do have is a special routine for finding the inverse of a matrix. So you give it a system of equations, the calculator will go off and calculate the inverse of the coefficient matrix and then solve the system of equations just as we did here by multiplying that inverse of the coefficient uh, matrix times the column of numbers appearing in the equations to give you the solution of the system that you're looking for.